Hello viewers, Ford DIYers here with another video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be going over the troubleshooting procedure for a limited slip differential in a third generation Dodge Ram. Mopar refers to this as their track lock differential. This is the nine and a quarter inch. As many of you know, I did replace the oil on the differential a couple years ago. The differential didn't have the proper maintenance intervals for the oil and unfortunately, that can shorten the life of the clutches. When I did replace the oil, it helped, but a little while after, it started chattering again. This is the most noticeable when turning at low speeds or while taking off from a stop. I will admit, probably my driving style didn't help the already worn clutches either. After an oil change, you'll need to drive the truck in a figure eight pattern 10 to 12 times. This will allow the fluid to work its way around within the clutches, and this may solve the issue. If not, the clutches will require replacement. Another method to determine worn clutches is by rotating one wheel by hand. First is blocking the front wheels so the truck doesn't roll away. Then jack up the one wheel on the rear axle so it's off the ground, doesn't matter which side. Put the transmission in neutral, do not start the engine. You can remove the wheel and there is an attachment to fasten to the studs so you have a center pivot point for a torque dial to measure the resistance. But you can feel this by hand as well. An acceptable rating would be between 30 foot pounds or 41 newton meters to 200 foot pounds or 271 newton meters. If it's outside of this value, then the clutches will require replacement. You can see the wheel is extremely easy to turn by hand while the other side is still stationary. A full rebuild is recommended while it's apart. It's peace of mind knowing that you won't have any component failures down the road and require splitting down the assembly again. I did order the parts online and it's extremely important to get good quality parts. If you cheapen out on something like bearings, the whole job will need to be redone if they fail prematurely. Instead of buying everything separately, you can get kits as well. Of course, you'll need the new oil, preferences will vary, and you'll also need a friction additive, which isn't shown here. Next is the outer bearings and seals, which sits just behind the hubs. The axles need to be removed regardless, so most of the work is already done for the replacement of those components. The other kit includes the bearings for the carrier and front and rear for the pinion. Next is a crushed sleeve, pinion nut, pinion seal, ring gear bolts, shims, thread locker, marking compound, an applicator brush, and gasket. I did try to get the clutch pack, but for whatever reason the stock seems to be limited from different suppliers. The dealer wanted $600 just for the clutches. That wasn't a realistic option for me as a new carrier is about $800 which includes the carrier, clutches, and spider gears. This is in Canadian dollars by the way. I was planning on doing the full rebuild myself, but due to some personal problems I decided against it and had a shop do it instead. Even finding a shop was a bit tough too as not everyone offers differential rebuilding. I ended up going with a shop that primarily works on transport trucks but also specializes in transmissions. The rebuild took them about four to five hours in total. Once those clutches have been replaced, you'll have a break in period. As a generalized procedure, you'll need to find an open parking lot where you can do a series of figure eights for about 30 minutes with light acceleration. This helps the clutches bed into each other. Another issue worth noting is that this model of differential has retaining clips for the clutches as shown here. These are also known to back out and can get caught up in the gears, chipping the teeth. If the teeth are damaged, then a replacement is required. New videos are released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a huge help to me. Leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. And if you're not a subscriber, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.